Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation with Euler's number. So we have cosine of z equals e and we're going to be solving for z values. Great. Now what does this have to do with complex numbers? You might be thinking, right? So remember when you first learned trigonometry, hopefully you have learned some trigonometry by this time, you learned about sine and cosine. And one of the things that they probably told you the first few weeks or days is that sine and cosine are bounded, right? Bounded means bounded from above and bounded from below, which means the cosine of an angle like theta has to be between negative one and positive one inclusive. And of course, the same thing goes for sine, right? But this is only when theta is real. Now what happens if theta isn't real? Then we don't have to abide by that. But take a look at this equation. Do you think E is less than or equal to 1? No. E is about 2.7. That's how much I know. Sometimes people ask me like, how many digits of pi have you memorized? I only memorize two digits after the decimal, and that's 1 and 4. 3.14 is all I need. Okay, anyways, so if you think about the famous identity, sine squared theta, or z, plus cosine squared z equals 1. This is also true for complex numbers, by the way, right? And if you replace cosine z with e, you're going to get e squared. And then from here, sine squared of z it's just going to be 1 minus e squared. And then, of course, you want to square root both sides. And then you're going to get two solutions plus minus the square root of 1 minus e squared. But e squared is greater than 1. Therefore, 1 minus e squared is less than 0. And the square root of a negative number is not real, right? So we get something like this. Sine of z equals plus minus square root of e squared minus 1 multiplied by i. So we kind of have to introduce the imaginary unit because the square root of negative 1 is plus minus i. So that's how it works. e squared minus 1 is positive. So this is a real number. So this is an imaginary number in other words, right? So if sine z is imaginary, can z be real? I doubt it. So let's go ahead and try to solve for z from the given equation. And that is cosine z equals e. All right? So... Let's see. How do you solve for z from here? Well, some sometimes people will say, and that's what Wolfram Alpha says too, right? You can just arc cosine both sides and just come up with a real cheap solution like arc cosine of e. If you go ahead and look at what Wolfram Alpha gave us, that's exactly what it is. Cosine inverse of e plus 2 pi n because these are multiples of 2 pi. But how good would that be, right? I mean, arc cosine e, but what is arc cosine e? So let's go ahead and find something more solid. This is a case where Wolfram Alpha cannot give us a good solution, but human beings can come up with a good solution. All right, let's do it. So we're going to discard that and just work on this. Hopefully you'll remember Euler's formula, cosine of z plus i sine of z. Obviously we know theta instead of the z, but even if uh, you have a complex number here, instead of theta, this still works. And this becomes e to the power iz, which is kind of like the complex exponentiation, right? And there's a conjugate of this. You can go ahead and negate the imaginary part, which means replacing z with negative z because sine is odd and cosine is even. And then from here, we can go ahead and derive a formula for cosine Add these two equations, you get 2 cosine z equals e to the iz plus e to the negative iz. And then cosine z becomes e to the iz plus e to the negative iz divided by 2. Exactly. This is the formula we're going to use. And I think I went over these in my lecture videos. If you haven't seen them and if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and use those as a refresher. But that is the identity formula we're going to use. This can also be written, uh, this can also be used for cosine hyperbolic function. But right now, let's stick with cosine. All right. So we got something for cosine of z. So why not set the right hand side equal to e, right? Because we know that 
cosine of z is equal to e. Let's go ahead and do that. e to the i z plus e to the negative i z divided by 2 equals e. And then we're just going to solve for z. How do you do that? Let's go ahead and write the e to the i z as something. How about using substitution? Let's go ahead and call this w. Okay, since that's going to be another complex number. And this gives us w plus 1 over w. And then if you do cross multiply, you're going to get 2e, or not 2e, right? And then w squared plus 1 equals 2ew. And then w squared minus 2ew plus 1 equals 0. So that's going to be our quadratic equation. We need to solve it and then go and back substitute. Using the quadratic formula, this is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that's going to be a minus 4, divided by 2. Notice that w is real. Why? Because 4a squared is greater than 4, we get a real solution. We get actually two real solutions from here. But let's simplify a little bit. Take out a 4 as 2, divide everything by 2, and you're going to get e plus minus the square root of e squared minus 1. Isn't that cool? Now, W is, remember, e to the power i z. So now, you got to set each of these equal to e to the i z and solve for z. Let's go ahead and do it. That's going to be fun. So e to the i z, let's go with the plus sign first. And then minus sign is going to be very similar. Maybe I'm going to leave it to you as an exercise. I know some people hate that, and I hated it when I have had that uh, in the textbook. Like, I see the, le the rest is left as an exercise, but that actually helps you. So, how do you solve it? Well, we can go ahead and try to write the right-hand side as e to the power something, and then we can just set the exponents equal to each other. Or you can do uh, natural log on both sides, and that's going to give you iz, and then you can kind of go from there. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now, one of the things you can definitely do here is multiply both sides by 1, or just the right-hand side, which is e to the power 2 pi and I, because you can always do it. And then natural log both sides, which makes more sense, right? So now, this is going to give us, when we do natural log, it's going to give us IZ. And the right-hand side, you're going to get ln of E plus the square root of E squared minus 1. Sometimes people write this as log, which is the complex logarithm. But this is the real part, plus 2 pi and I. Awesome. Since we're looking for Z, we can divide by Z. I mean, we can divide by i, but then, how do you divide by i? I'd, I'd rather multiply both sides by negative i because it's easier, sort of. So, if you multiply both sides by negative i, negative i squared is 1, so you're going to get z equals, when we multiply i by negative i again, that's going to become a 1, so we're going to end up with 2 pi n, right? That's the real part, plus... And that's going to be a minus sign, actually, in this case. Minus i times the ln of a real number, right? Cool. So that's going to be one of the solutions. And to find the other solution, you're going to proceed. And that's going to be very, very similar. Again, if you look at the solutions from Wolfram Alpha, they are not very helpful, are they? So this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.